Thank you, Steve. Um, I'd like to start by thanking Steve and Ronit and Elia Zor from the Jerusalem Post, and of course, Ronald Lauder, the chairman of the conference, and my father's <coughs> successor uh, for the opportunity to address you all today. Ambassador Ross, ministers, friends, thank you for allowing me this opportunity. <coughs> that was a <coughs> rather emotional film for me. My dad was a leader. He was a leader in business, a leader in philanthropy, <coughs> and a leader in the Jewish world. In the last few weeks of his life, we talked about his legacy, <coughs> and we discussed what he felt would be his lasting achievements. He knew that his work on behalf of Soviet Jewry, his fight for the restitution from the Swiss banks and insurance companies, and his exposure of the Nazi past of Kurt Waldheim would all be headlines in any speech about his 25 years as president of the World Jewish Congress. But he also hoped that people would remember his work as the first international chairman of Hillel and his support of his brother Charles in Teglit. <coughs> Excuse me. But perhaps the philanthropy closest to his heart in his later years was the group of recipients of the Bronfman Youth Fellowship Program in Israel. For the past 29 years, a cohort of extraordinary students have been traveling to Israel for an intensive five weeks of learning every summer. This group is pushed, prodded, and forced to challenge each other's views. The students who have become today's leaders and tomorrow's leaders have always come from different streams within our Jewish mosaic and have come from different economic backgrounds as well. This cohort of Bronfmanim, as they call themselves, is already changing lives in ways large and small in the world. A number of examples are chronicled in my father's last book. As Steve mentioned, my father was also a writer, a writer who penned five books plus his own Haggadah. The book he wrote, which was passed out here today and for sale, completed just four weeks before his death called Why Be Jewish? is a clarion call to study. For the, <clears throat> the one thing my father could not tolerate was ignorance. He was happy to hear different opinions, to discuss them, to be challenged, and to challenge them, but only if those opinions had a basis in fact and in knowledge. It was this core Jewish value that inspired me to become the first chairman of Limud FSU a program of learning for Russian-speaking Jews. In the 11 years since we started Limud FSU, we have had 45,000 young Russian Jews, young Russian-speaking Jews, from around the world at our programs. We have moved from let my people go to let my people know. My father claimed that he did not believe in a God who rewards and punishes us based on our daily actions. But the more he studied Torah and Talmud, the more he understood the value of incorporating our universal Jewish values as a guidepost for living, <coughs> for living a, more, a more moral, meaningful, and fulfilling life. In fact, one of the main themes of his book is that one does not have to believe in God in order to live an authentic Jewish life. As I, as I said at the memorial service at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem, one of the things I love about being Jewish is that all of our heroes are flawed. Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and even David Chamelech were all flawed. My father was also flawed. And you may or may not agree with all of the particular points of views in his book, but he was unquestionably passionate about Judaism and a great leader of our people. He fought tirelessly for our brethren from the Soviet oppression and for young Jews to have the opportunity to learn here in the US, in the former Soviet Union, and everywhere else. And I am blessed to have the opportunity to carry on that tradition of service. Thank you very much.